So the Safety Pizza has to be one of the more interesting bicycle safety devices that has come out in the last couple of years. It's reached a sort of viral success. It was featured in Wirecutter Magazine. It's on GCN, on Bike Radar. Bike shop Blue Lug in Japan even sells it. In this episode of PLP Talks, we interview Chris, the inventor, the creator of the Safety Pizza, and we talk about its unlikely success, some of the challenges in running it as a small business, and where he sees it going in the future. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of PLP Talks, where we have interesting conversations with people we know in and around the bike industry. And just a quick note, if you like content like this, consider supporting the podcast and our YouTube channel. All the information is in the show notes. Don't forget to rate and review it on iTunes or however you discover the podcast. And without further ado, let's get into the show. Well, today we have a special guest. We're here with the man behind Safety Pizza, a pretty fun and innovative bike safety accessory that's taken the internet by storm. So stoked to have Chris on the podcast. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Russ. So Safety Pizza, I'd like to think it's gone viral in, in, in some way. Like I keep seeing it pop up on the internet. Can you talk a little bit about how that how the whole concept came about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Safety Pizza started uh, when I was living in Brooklyn, working at um, 718 Cyclery, just a little plug there, um, and pretty immersed in the cycling culture and um, just having like a really good time working as a bike mechanic. It was a, one of my favorite jobs. Uh, and yeah, the, the standard reflective triangle made by Aardvark, which I still hold as like, the king of all reflective accessories. Um, and I just remember seeing that, but like thinking about how it would just kind of flap around a lot. And I, for some reason, wanted to improve on that. And I don't know if I, I didn't improve on it. I just made an iteration of it. That's kind of how I think of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just turned it upside down so that it wouldn't flap around so much. And then I was like, that's a pizza. <laughs> So that's like that's it that's where it came from just like that momentary like oh that's a pizza and then the toppings happened the toppings happened um a, a lot of the um early innovations i guess came from um working with other people first iteration was like well it's at the bottom of the gowanus canal because i made a very bad attachment system and i just took apart like a ikea um, safety vest and had like um, some just an old sewing machine that was around our house from like a previous roommate. Sewed that together, ended up making like two different iterations before I started talking to actual manufacturers. Mm -hmm. um, and this was like very, very early where I was just like, I think, I don't think I'm good enough to make this in quantity. So yeah, actually, yeah, the toppings that you apply yourself came about through a really awesome day spent with the folks at SoLab who are also Holdfast in Baltimore. They were nice enough to just kind of host me for a day and workshop. And uh, we were talking about the toppings that it, originally I was going to have them sewn on before I knew anything about like the costs of manufacturing and, and you know, things that take time cost money. And um, we came up with an idea to let the customers do it themselves. And that actually was it like worked out so well in both ways that it's not something that I, we have to attach. And then it's something that is like an activity for the customer. Yeah, I thought that was brilliant. I don't think it, it would have felt as fun if, it, if if all the toppings were there, because then you could kind of pick and choose or modify the toppings to to how you wanted them to look. Exactly. I have a lot of requests um, for uh, vegetarian pizzas, to which I say they're all vegan. <laughs> they're 100% vegan safety pizza. Um, vegan, but... vegan and gluten free. <laughs> exactly. Vegan, gluten free. Um, but if people maybe don't want to think of those red circles as pepperonis. They can always cut them in half and make them into tomatoes or cut them into quarters and make them into chilies. That's my that's my fix for the vegetarian slice. So how long has, uh, I guess, Safety Pizza been in existence now? I was thinking about that today. I was like trying to figure out the timeline. I think 2015, like I was kind of developing it as we were getting ready to move to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, 2015, uh, the first iterations kind of we're coming out of my house. And then um, in 2016, they were all handmade by me. And that was really fun. That was when I would do like runs of 
20 was like a really big deal for me and they would sell out like one time it sold out in like 45 seconds or something and <laughs> so unprepared for that um uh and then finally early 2017 i started having them manufactured here in downtown la um and we've gone through a few different iterations since then um since i first started making them but the one we're at now i think is pretty close to locking it down i was actually gifted the safety pizza Manny oh. cost yeah we were living in portland at the time uh, manny and uh, i think his then fiance were in town and then we went to uh, get lunch you know a bunch of bikey people and then when we got back to our bike there were a bunch of uh, safety pizzas gifted to to the bikes so it's like oh, oh what God. the heck is this <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be too hyperbolistic, but Manny Acosta is the reason for safety pizza. He's like done so much to just like spread the stoke in general, but also like spread the, the safety pizza stuff. I really like, I owe him a lot. Yeah, he's so cool. He um, stopped by the shop early when I didn't, when I wasn't even really making safety pizza, I'd made like five or 10. And um, just so happened that he stopped by 718 Cyclery while he was on, um, on vacation. And I was in there packing up my bikes, getting ready to move to Los Angeles and recognized him from Instagram and like just showed him like a safety pizza. I don't think I even gave him one back then. I just had like the one <laughs> and he like took some pictures and then um, basically kept prodding me to like do something with it and like make it into something and he would like check in on me every once in a while and I, I would send him out and like anytime I had any for order, he would like order a whole pie's worth and like, yeah, I don't know. We could talk about Manny for the whole <laughs> So, <laughs> so Manny is the ultimate pizza, pizza ambassador. <laughs> he is. He's the ultimate pizza ambassador and like just someone who's like philosophy around bikes that I, I really, really appreciate. Not even just bikes, just like, how to have fun with people and like mm -hmm. go out and do cool activities. I think he's so cool. Yeah. So why do you think uh, the safety pizza has become so popular? <laughs> I don't know. I wish I had something to do with it. I actually like, I'm like, I'm not going to say I'm bad at marketing. I'm just not very active. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's the name. It just, it's like two things that are great and you, I, they got combined and now it's like, hard to argue with the, the statement safety pizza i mean does it um did it surprise you when you first put it online and people were actually buying them i can't yeah i like i thought it was a good idea you know when i first started making them i was like sometimes you have an idea and you like get that little tingle or whatever and i was like this is gonna be i think this is gonna be something but i like just thought like oh this is gonna be something that like 10 or 20 people on Instagram will think is cool because like people like bikes and people like pizza and people like reflective things. <laughs> um, but that, yeah, I was unprepared for um, how popular it's gotten lately. I, I'm doing this podcast interview and we're, we have zero stock right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're like in the middle of a manufacturing run, but I, um, I could have been a little better prepared for, for uh, Christmas. I was, I forgot about that whole thing. <laughs> that the whole holiday thing. <laughs> yeah, and I got, we had an article in Wire Cutter magazine, where they we were included on their um, holiday gift buying guide. They also put it first on the list, so that generated. That's why I sold out this holiday season. It was a really really huge thing, and for me it was really awesome that there's a whole group of people getting safety pizzas for Christmas that aren't um, kind of in the bespoke Instagram kind of cycling arena i think it's it's been really important for me to to branch out from that and just start engaging with people that aren't as crazy as i am about bikes and cycling culture and all that this holiday season uh it, it really blew up like i saw that it was on gcn and then bike radar oh yeah i uh, did a yep. piece and i was like whoa <laughs> again that's not me like reaching out to like to, to these people or anything it just kind of I like to say safety pizza is taking on a life of its own and it kind of, it's able to go out there and like spread joy. And I think people react to that. You've had international orders that just, it's, it's made it beyond just the U.S. Oh yeah. I should, I should also give a shout out to Blue Lug for being um, the first shop to put in an order for safety pizzas. Um, they are uh, 
clearly like always like very ahead of trends and on top of things and and found I don't, i'm not sure how they found safety pizza but um they reached out for my first shop order i can been continuing to stock with them since and other, i think people have this reaction especially like i was like oh yeah this, this like bike shop in japan's carrying a blue lug and and like sometimes people are like what blue lug like they're like no oh, they're so cool and i'm like i know I, they they found it you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah blue lug blue lug's a good barometer once it lands in their their shop then it's it's on the radar <laughs> It's, yeah, exactly. They've got a they've got a really good handle on on cool stuff. Yeah. So what was the point where you decided to say, "Hey, doing this by myself is like crazy. I have to like get some help." Yeah, I, it was probably my girlfriend Sarah Beth who helped me with that. Um, not that it was ever a problem, but she just like we noticed how um, even for doing like the early runs of like twenty or twenty five, the house would get like absolutely destroyed the whole like living area and the dining room table became um a safety pizza mess uh <laughs> and then of course just like trying to keep up with orders was um becoming it was becoming impossible because i i do like i still haven't quit my day job so like i said i'm like at a at a client's space right now last march a series of things happened um we were both laid off at the same time which can be troubling, but we, we like seem to have taken it in stride and, and done pretty well. But at the same time, I, um, finally opened up to pre-orders, which was something that I had been, uh, hesitant to do before because just for my mind, not having stock to fulfill orders was stressful. And then also not knowing whether this manufacturer would be able to make something of quality. Um, but it turned out fine. And we got like, I opened up the free orders and that basically helped safety pizza launch. It was like a, um, a non Kickstarter event sort of, you know? So how often do you, um, do you get batches made? I should have, I was going to look up how many I made last year, but we just started last March. So we do, we do runs of about 500 to a thousand at a time every few months. So do you have a sense of how many you've sold in, let's say, last year? That's a good question. I would say maybe, I don't know, like 2,500 or so. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty good. That's, that's, that seems like a lot for like a what, what started out as like a pretty niche product. It is. Yeah, it's about as niche as it gets, honestly. But um, the plan now is that I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm working with other manufacturers um, that do more technical stuff. And um, expanding the product line a little bit, but mostly I really want to nail, have safety pizza nailed down and have it ready for, I, my dream for safety pizza is to have it nationally distributed, if not internationally distributed, and just have it be a thing that is, you know, like you go into a bike shop and there's, there's the safety pizza. Right, right. You see the aardvark reflector and then safety pizza is the, the fun option. <laughs> oh yeah. The fun, like... The fun option that's a little more expensive. We're working on that. So it seems like the the attachment point has changed. Like, what was the the, the first the first way it mounted, and like how is how has it changed over time? Absolute first one was with like crappy Velcro that I <laughs> you know took from an Ike, IKEA safety vest, um, and then it evolved. And then like I had problems with Velcro just because I was a terrible um, seamster, and so. I switched over to the heavy duty snaps for a while. Um, and then finally like came back to Velcro because, uh, because of manufacturing, just, I wanted it to be going to get into manufacturing a little bit just cause that's like a lot of what I've learned and kind of the, the industry that I'm into it. We, we think a lot about manufacturing and steps and how you can eliminate those steps. Um, and so using Velcro eliminated quite a few steps and different tools and, and uh, just simplified it. And I think the attachment is just as strong. Um, had it strapped to the back of my car for a trip from Los Angeles to Portland and back, and it held up perfectly fine. Um, it actually didn't even fray that much. Uh, we can get into the different kinds of fabrics and stuff. I'm, I, I, you know, whatever. <laughs> so if, if you're a small business and then all of a sudden there's a, a spike in demand and then you realize you know, you can't do it yourself. You have to go into manufacturing. Like, how do you make 
how do you get your foot in the door? Did you have someone that manufactured product before, or did you have that as like something that you did in the background and were kind of familiar with how to navigate those waters? Um, I, one of my, um, lighting clients actually did a lot of, um, work in the fashion industry and that's, there's a ton of workshops here in Los Angeles. Um, you can get pretty much anything sewn, which is yeah. really good, but finding a good one's a little difficult. Um, but he recommended these guys and, um, they have been working out really well and they, for, for them, like they're used to making like, um, blazers and shirts and very intricate three-dimensional things. And so when I showed him safety pizza, I had amassed all these PDFs and like measurements and like, I was very detailed about it. And like, I thought they were blowing me off cause they're like, yeah, sure. Fine. It's this much. We'll do it. And I was like, Oh, well, they don't seem that interested, but it turns out it's just, a, it's very flat and easy to sew. So it's not that, it's not that difficult for a manufacturer yeah. <laughs> turns out it was it seemed very difficult when it was me on my like hundred dollar sewing machine but yeah did they kind of did they kind of giggle when you presented them the product <laughs> or... yeah i mean it's i've just learned to live with that like walking in cold with safety pizza to somebody who's never even heard of i mean i have I've had to do that with all of my friends and family and like introduce them to this concept called safety pizza. And nobody like when you first say that, nobody knows what you're talking about. Um, but the sewing guys, yeah, they they like do such a variety of things that they I don't think they were taken aback at all. They just like they're like, yeah, whatever. We'll just it's just so this is just a thing to sew. So we'll do it. Yeah. Uh, so do you have do you have many uh, bike shops right now in the in the U.S. that carry safety pizza? Um, yeah, I've got a good collection. Uh, they're all listed on the website. I'm always open to more. I think that's more of the model I'm going to start moving into is really, really trying to push um, push it into bike shops and and have customers and you know new customers find it that way. Uh, I'm not good at Instagram. I can take a decent picture, but I for whatever reason I just um, uh, I don't know why I just, I'm not good at it. I'm trying yeah. to get better. And I like, I don't know if you look at safety pizzas, Instagram, I probably haven't posted since like early December. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's in the works too. Hey, if there's anybody out there who is good at Instagram and wants to do it for money, <laughs> let me go. know. <laughs> <laughs> you talked a little bit about like expanding the, the product line. So would there mm -hmm. be like, um, just variations of the pizza or other food items? Like safety watermelon. <laughs> the, the, the suggestions I get the most are other food products, like safety this, safety that, you know, like, and I try to explain to people, like, the reason it's safety pizza is because it's trying, you know, like, the pedigree of safety pizza is that, <laughs> like, it all goes back to the, the, the aardvark reflective triangle and just, like, turn that thing upside down and right. whatever. But, um, I am making like a smaller version called safety pizzetta and that's like a little double sided um, and it attaches with a drawstring and the thought is like you can attach it's for like non bikes too. you can put it on a backpack or um, I don't know motorcycle car. <laughs> yeah if you go like trail running or uh, take your your dog out and they've got a vest you could put some, some yeah. dangles. Some yeah, pizza dangles. I know the dangle <laughs> industry is really blowing up. Into... That's where you should put your money, people, in the dangles. Yeah, invest. <laughs> yeah, invest in dangles. What's been like the the most, I guess, surprising thing about the whole process? I think um, some of the communications I get from customers have been like Sarah Beth and I have cried when we've gotten some of the letters. Like people tell that tell us that it changes the way drivers react to them. And like, like, well, maybe they're being hyperbolistic, but like it changes their bike life in a way they say, like, I've gotten quite a few emails like this, that people notice, um, a difference in drivers attitudes towards them. And I think what it is, is that it is like, it's kind of humanizing for somebody to see, oh, this is not just like a bike with a bike, you know, like that's in my way. It's like a human who likes pizza. I don't know. Like I, I like pizza. I don't, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then that's kind of like something I'd like to think about a way to communicate that even more is like, I'm a human on a bike, not just like this bike that's like flashing and in your way. Cause 
you can't get down Sepulveda or whatever. Yeah, I do. I do see where like the art bar could just read as you know some kind of like a reflective construction cone or something. But like like you said, like the pizza, there's a human touch to it. Yeah, exactly. And I brought. Oh, we're. This isn't going to be on video. I brought like some examples of past safety pizzas. And I can, stuff. Well, hold up. I can put it on the Instagram when I promote it. Oh, <laughs> It'll okay. be the Instagram <laughs> exclusive. Here's. Um, <laughs> this is really great. This is Mark II of Safety Pizza, and you can see how I was like sewing the pepperonis and like how crappy these mushrooms are. There's that IKEA safety vest. Nice. That you know that uh, almost looks like if if bicycle pubes had a sewing machine, it would. <laughs> <laughs> this is the quality standard <laughs> I aspire to. Is the pubes bicycle pubes quality? <laughs> um, Do you have Mark One? No, Mark One is at the bottom of the Gowanus. Okay. <laughs> and then I don't know. Like you could just see. Like I was very much into like. I was like, well, does it have to be a pizza? Can it just be like this? Like a penny. weird thing. Yeah. Can I use our hearts as my backing? I, I, you know, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a weird process. So that 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 the artwork reflector that only has one attachment point though, right? Yeah, it has like two little straps that come up the top here. Okay. And then maybe a piece of Velcro. I forget. I, I like took this one apart for research. <laughs> was it hard to to settle on the material? Or was it pretty obvious, like, okay, this is the reflective material to use? No, the, um, well, the reflective materials, no, all of that stuff. I, I wish I could quantify how much research I've put into, like, reflective materials and, and um, safety flag materials and, and all this crazy stuff. Uh, the reflective material is a GP340 um, ANSI qualified. Here's a late 2019. This is ANSI qualified or whatever. It's... It's good for like emergency responders and certified in all different kinds of ways. The orange part is um, a very niche product. It's a non-fraying ripstop uh, polyvinyl uh, PVC impregnated fabric. Um, <laughs> and it took a while to find, um, but I finally found it. And there's one company in the States that um, supplies it and they, um, and they're pretty cool. They won't give me their supplier, but that's okay. We'll work on that. It's tough. like you never want to. You would never want to be dependent upon one vendor, you know. But for now, we're we're just riding with it. It's good. It's a really good the material. Have they seen the? Do they know what the final product is? We've gone back and forth a little bit because I was trying to get them to manufacture it for me. Okay. Um, a lot of manufacturers, uh, when you when you like send them a product, you get like dead silence back sometimes. <laughs> just like no. <laughs> um, but thankfully, I'm working with a hopefully this guy up in Northern California that is um, does more technical sewing and stuff. And it's really what I'm after is somebody that comes from a, a technical background and can kind of like figure out help me figure out how to make these much faster and cheaper, but keep them in the States. That, that's also a really um, important thing that safety pizza, I want always to be made in the United States. Mm -hmm. So when you say technical, like sewing, like what's the, the technical challenge? Is it just the getting through the material or the construction? Um, just somebody who like understands, um, not understands, but like can make templates for there's like these automatic things that will sew certain parts, like the box stitches and I forget what they're named. Uh, and then also even like the main slice could be sewed with a, um, it's like a, I forget what it's called. It's a template that you put on and it kind of like goes around and sews it in a very particular way every time. So it's um, kind of a little bit less of a human hand. Um, I think safety pizza is beyond the, the point where it needs or wants like a, much of a, a human touch on every slice. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's like, it's not that complicated. <laughs> But that being said, I still do all the um, quality control and um, packaging. Yeah, that's always the packaging is always like kind of a good bottleneck to where you can you can kind of like stop your products, and like that's where the human hand comes in is that you're holding each piece, you get a chance to flip it over, take a look, and trim any edges or flyaways or anything. Well, cool. Um, so looking at the store empty, uh, if someone is just dying to get a safety pizza, where sh should they go? Uh, just email me, info at safetypizza.com, and uh, 
I can add to a list. I maybe I'll put like a um, a waiting. I, I get in trouble with like waiting lists. They they tend to get out of control. But I probably should do that now that we're out of stock. Coming soon. That's all I can say. Like it, it, it's it's good in the sense that like the way I have them manufactured now, it's very quick turnaround. I get all the supplies, um, I take them down to the workshop, and uh, within the, a week or so, they're ready to ready for me to QC package. Well, cool. It's it, it's great to hear that. It's it sounds as if like we haven't reached uh, peak safety pizza yet. <laughs> 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 the wave is yeah, still uh, I know, rising. I don't know what peak safety pizza is. I'm excited to find out though. This last year, like, uh, incredible. Yeah, it's so fun. Keep an eye out for more products. Well, thank you, uh, Chris, for being on the show. And uh, if you guys are interested in the safety pizza, want to buy your own or uh, contact him directly. But next run of availability, av- availability go to safetypizza.com. Safetypizza.com. And follow safety pizza on Instagram. So thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much, Russ. This is awesome. Thanks again for joining us with another episode of PLP Talks. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave a rating and review. And as always, keep the supple side down.